This is Valley News Live at 5. Hello again, everyone. A motorcyclist driver uh, remains in serious condition this afternoon after being hit by a dump truck in South Fargo late yesterday afternoon. It happened on 52nd Avenue South. The driver of the dump truck was ticketed for failing to yield. Friends of the motorcyclist say he underwent his second surgery this morning. They also say this is the second crash he's been in in less than a month. It was two weeks ago he was hit from behind on 13th Avenue South. An extensive search continues for a North Dakota native who went missing last weekend after going for a run in the mountains of Colorado. His car was located parked at the trailhead. Reporter Scarlett Lizjack spoke with officials about this challenging search. Durango resident and experienced runner David Lundy left his home early Saturday morning for no ordinary run. This is something called the La Plata Enchilada. It's kind of a uh, only those folks really kind of know it because it's insane. Apparently it's a 28 to 40 mile loop through La Plata Canyon depending on what route you take. If apparently you actually can go from a peak to peak and you run along the ridge line in between these peaks. It really does sound intense. But he never returned. Holtine says search and rescue crews quickly assembled and started an extensive search first thing on Sunday. There's no roads in there. These are all foot crews, ATVs, uh, two-wheeled motorcycles, horses, helicopters, uh, fixed-wing aircraft, uh, drones. Um, you know, they're, we're throwing the kitchen sink at it, but it's a huge area. It's not just the vast rugged terrain that makes this area dangerous, but how unpredictable the weather is in the high country. It's changing weather. Uh, while it may be beautiful and sunny down here, if you go up into the San Juan Mountains, it can drop 30, 40 degrees and be snowing. So, yes, that danger is always there. Holtine says it's important not to venture in the mountains alone. Always go with a buddy, a partner. Um, if you're hiking, climbing, camping, whatever, hunting, whatever you're doing, going into this, uh, into the wilderness alone is, uh, it's very dangerous, uh, mainly because the communications can be so difficult. Holtine says search crews will continue to search the area, but as of today, they have not found a trace of him. And authorities say that that search will continue. There's a definite chill in the air and temps tonight will again be dropping. Let's get the latest from Summer Schnellbach. Hello, Summer. Hey, Mike, thank you so much. At least we have a little bit of sunshine to make these cool days feel better. But first alert weather days continue tonight through Saturday morning. But first, I want to introduce a very special guest. It's Luther Family Ford Weather Kid Night, and we want to welcome Chase Bensinger this evening. How old are you, Chase? 11. 11 years old. And what school do you go to? Um, DGF. All right. And we talked about this earlier. What's your very favorite subject in school? Recess. Yeah, that was mine too. We like to get out and play. And is there anyone that you want to say hi to before we get started? Uh, my mom. Hey, mom. How's it going? All right. So we know it was a cold start to our day, right, Chase? Yeah. What is this? It's snowing. Yeah, it snowed in parts of northern Minnesota this morning. We had this video come in from Justin in Lake of the Woods. That's some lake effect snow. Most of us stayed dry, though, didn't we? Did you get snow at your house? No. Yeah, it didn't in my house either. Let's walk through some of these temperature chase. Uh, so I'll have you point out a few cities and what are those temperatures out there? 47 degrees in Grand Forks, 48 degrees in Fargo. 45 degrees in Hollock. All right, yeah, so it's pretty chilly out there, isn't it? Lots of blues and greens on the map. Temperatures are coldest to the north. It's only 41 degrees right now in Langdon. But Chase, what do we see when we look at the satellite and radar? What's going on out there? We're having some sprinkles in Duluth. Yeah, some snow or some rain showers, not snow showers, warm enough now just for some rain. But what are we seeing maybe closer to Fargo or even up in Baudette? Near... Fargo and Bismarck, it's sunny. Um, Bada, it's it's um cloudy. Yeah, we got some more clouds out there in uh, Minnesota, don't we? So we're seeing just a couple clouds here in our Devil's Lake home of Economy Sky Camp. And we'll take a step back so we can see this graphic here. Can you tell people what it's going to be like tonight in Fargo, Chase? 
It will be 39 degrees at 9 p.m., 36 degrees at 11 p.m. Right, so we're going to turn cold pretty quickly. This morning we were in the 30s, but tonight into tomorrow morning, we're going to dip much, much cooler into freeze category. Chase, can you explain to folks at home what the criteria is for freeze? Freeze is the lowest that classifies as freeze is 28 degrees to 32 degrees. Yeah, what about hard freeze? Because that's what we're going to see for some folks. Hard freeze is below 28. Yeah, so that means maybe the garden needs to be covered up or maybe some of those plants need to be brought in for tonight. So Chase, you got to go back to school for tomorrow. Let's give your fellow classmates an idea of what they can expect for their school day at DGF Middle School. It will be 30 to um, degrees cloudy and um, 46 degrees sunny. Yeah, so might need a jacket maybe in the morning, right? Do you have your winter coat ready to go yet? Yep. Good. And by the afternoon, a little bit warmer, pretty close to what we saw for today uh, in the sunshine will make it feel pretty good, won't it? Yep. All right, so everyone at home, Congratulate Chase on his beautiful forecast for tonight. Mike, coming up, we will talk a lot more about the cold that's coming and when we might see another warm up soon. Chase, I dig your good looking glasses. They look great on TV. They're pretty cool, aren't they? All right, thanks. <laughs> a player on the West Fargo Cheyenne boys soccer team is speaking out tonight. This after the team was forced to forfeit its games, including the state tournament due to an ineligible athlete. In a statement, senior captain Connor Anderson is calling on administrators to make a change. He says in part the responsibility for this situation was taken behind closed doors, not in the public eye. Our athletic administrators declared this as a system error. He goes on to say that the team and the coaches did not know about the ineligibility. Anderson says this is not the first time this mistake has been made and he and his teammates want an answer on how this is going to be fixed. You can read the full statement by going to our website at valleynewslive.com. Thief River Falls police continue to investigate items stolen from several cars. Police are encouraging residents to not keep valuables in your vehicle and lock it up after you get out. If you have any information about the thefts, you're asked to call authorities at 218-681-6161. Gas prices could soon be on the rise again as oil producers around the world vow to cut production starting next month. The move is being criticized by President Biden, who spoke about the economy during an event in New York today. The president and Democrats are trying to focus on the positive to stay in power with midterm elections just over a month away. But a big challenge, high gas prices make the situation a little worse. OPEC announcing it will cut output by 2 million barrels a day starting next month. That move could increase home heating costs and spike the price of gas by 20 to 30 cents per gallon. This is the price that America pays when we aren't willing to make the investment and, and have policies that support uh, the encouragement of American energy production. We're going after the big oil companies for price gouging and we're increasing domestic and international supplies. Now that's a plan. The other side is trying to exploit these frustrations. Inflation across the U.S. economy is leading to aggressive moves by the Fed aimed at reducing prices. A new jobs report due out tomorrow will show how well that's working. Fargo City Commissioner and Deputy Mayor Dave Pepcorn has kind of come under fire for his comments made this week. Today, the Fargo Native American Commission addressed statements calling out his behavior, and they're not alone. Valley News Team's Aaron Walling brings us the story. The people that need help, that want help, we help them. The, the people that don't, you know what they should do during the day? Get a job. How's that? How's that being productive members? These words by Deputy Mayor and Fargo City Commissioner Dave Pepcorn have sparked a firestorm. He was speaking about Fargo's engagement center, the building next to City Hall, meant to help the local homeless population and those with chemical and alcohol dependencies. A very intoxicated Native American sleeping right next to my building, so I called 911. He says the engagement center isn't working and it needs to go, saying it is impacting taxpayers' money. That's prompting a response by the Fargo Native American Commission. I wonder if this is what the residents of Fargo wish to see in their leadership. Leaders who abandon those most in need, 
because they, they've made a personal judgment about whether those people's lives are worth saving. After Pepcorn's speech on Monday, many in the public spoke on the prejudices and stereotypes that Native people face in the community. Those comments um, were really disheartening and you know it, it sort of makes you feel unwelcome in the community. Because these kind of things perpetuate uh, the, the things that oppress us as people and I, I think you know it, it goes without saying obviously all ethnicities are, are deserving of the same level of respect and, and opportunities. Other members of the city commission then retorted Pepcorn's remarks. And when a commissioner speaks with opinion and without fact and incites a conversation without data. Not only is it demoralizing to city employees, it has a chilling effect on the citizens who come before this commission. They are our neighbors, and the disrespect that was shown here um, needs to be stopped. The Fargo Native American Commission wants the engagement center to stay and Pepcorn's behavior to be examined instead. And I'm disappointed that despite his lack of decorum in the past and just very recently, not only has been allowed to maintain his position, but his position has been elevated to that of being the deputy mayor. In Fargo, Air Walling, Valley News Live. We reached out to Dave Pepcorn for comment and have not heard back from him yet. Stick around later on Valley News Live at 5. What's driving Ford to raise the price of its new electric powered pickups? And it's been a chilly day across the valley. Temperatures right now only in the 40s, right at 40 in Bemidji, one of the coolest spots. We are double digits colder than this time yesterday. 28 degrees colder right now in Fargo than 24 hours ago, and we're going to get colder. We'll have the very latest on our first alert weather days next.